end of another year, our next meeting will be next year, and the end of the year means we're having um, more director of uh, elections. If anyone is interested in this uh, position, uh, where there's no pay and lots of work, I'm sitting in after the meeting. <laughs> okay. Uh, Next, uh, if there are any candidates in the room, any candidates who want to introduce themselves, right. want to oh. uh, value you the rest of your room. Thank you, Richard. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name, my name is Matt. My name is Matt Schoenbrunn. You must be an attorney the way you're trying to do that. <laughs> My name is Matt Schoenbrunn, and I'm running for Superior Court Judge on June 5th. I'm going to ask your indulgence, and I'm going to ask for a show of hands right now. I'd like you to raise your hand if you, a friend or family member, has been the victim of a crime. Raise your hand. And keep them up, please. Keep them up. Those of you who have your hands raised, that is the reason why I spent the last 10 years as a criminal prosecutor working day in and day out, doing my best to make our community safer. And that's why I want to spend the next 25 years as a judge doing the same thing. And those of you who are fortunate enough to have not raised your hand just now, I'd like to think that, that the work that I've done and my colleagues has done plays some small part in the fact that each and every one of you who did not raise your hand had I been fortunate enough to not have to deal with crime, violence, and the aftermath of that. As a criminal prosecutor, I've seen the effect that crime has on communities and on families. And as a prosecutor, I have certain tools at my disposal that I can do to help keep victims of violence safe. And the reason why I want to be a judge is because that tool set is greatly expanded. I feel that I can do even more of service more as a judge in helping keep our community safe, our park safe, and each and every one of us. And your name again? Matt Schoenbrunn. And the election is on June 5, 2012. I live in the Valley, and I do have the support of my boss, Harvey McCannish. Thank you very much. I don't know. Okay. Uh, I'd like to uh, introduce our new uh, senior lead officer, uh, someone that uh, a lot of you know when he was our senior lead officer a few years ago. He has returned as of five days ago and he's going to give us an update on what's happening in Turner Oaks. Uh, we're going to take a particular uh, focus on the incident on Ventura Boulevard, uh, I guess yesterday. Yes, sir. Uh, a that. number of stores, uh, their windows were shot out, or the TV gun, or whatever it is. And that is a serious matter, especially to those uh, owners of the businesses. But also, it raises questions, because I got uh, calls. It raises questions, of, you know, is our community safe? Uh, it can be businesses, it can be homes. Uh, so, uh, I'd introduce uh, our senior lead officer, Ron Kyler. Uh, we'll give us an update in particular about that incident. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, before I speak uh, from, from uh, what I know, I want to read a, a statement that was written uh, and provided. Uh, how many of you here receive an Ixl or, or signed up for an Ixl registry? Not, not a lot of people. If you log on to our website, which is www.lapdonline.com, Org. I'll repeat that again, and I also have some newsletters up there with that information. It's lapdonline.org. Uh, and look for the NIXL, N-I-X-L-E, registration. You can click on that box, register automatically, and immediately you'll start receiving 
uh, blasts, email blasts, that they're called Nixle blasts, from the, from the uh, various organizations. Uh, this was put out by our property crimes unit, so I'll read it verbatim because this is what's being given out. We, we do have additional information, which uh, fortunately until the perpetrators, the bad guys are caught, I can't give a lot of it out, but on November the 14th at 9, 9 p.m., three businesses on Ventura Boulevard from the 14900 block to the 15300 blocks of Ventura had the windows shattered from a BB gun and or marbles fired from a slingshot. Uh, a vehicle was seen and is described as an older model, dark colored, four-door sedan, and it had bad paint, described, described maybe sun damage type paint. The driver of the suspect is described as a male with a thick mustache, uh, wearing a multicolored knit beanie, and the second suspect was seated in the rear seat, no further description on him. Anyone with information about this crime is asked to call the Van Nuys uh, area theft detective, and basically you can call one number to get a hold of Van Nuys and just ask to be transferred to the theft detectives. It's uh, 374 -0020. Uh, but the number you can call directly to speak with Detective Ashley is 374-0026. Uh, you can also report that using Crime Stoppers, uh, which is an anonymous uh, tipping agency, uh, and there are several other agencies. And maybe they mention LAPDonline.org as well. Now let me speak to what I know about this. Uh, some of you remember that we had uh, about 15 years ago, maybe a little bit less than that, we had about 15 or 20 businesses along the Turbo Bar, starting to be sitting all the way to West Valley, uh, who had their windows smashed out. And uh, that turned out to be a gentleman, I should not use that term very loosely, but an individual who uh, had hired some folks to shoot uh, slingshots out the windows, and he coincidentally owned a glass manufacturing company. So he was caught. Uh, that was a little obvious. Our detectives weren't ready to him uh, with a few tips. But what, what we need is we do need some, some help. That vehicle was seen, and we have an approximate time frame. And as some of you know, uh, I know Richard does, we have some video cameras along with Ventura Boulevard. So we've uh, dedicated one person to begin uh, looking specifically uh, uh, at that, that video to try to find a similar vehicle, and maybe we can hone in on the license plate. But I would ask your, your help. If you see anybody slowing down along Ventura Boulevard and it looks suspicious, uh, again, don't put yourself in harm's way. But if you have an opportunity to get a license plate and you see something coming out of the vehicle, what happens is that if they use a marble, it's glass already, so if it strikes the window, it shatters, it becomes part of the glass, and we don't even fly a projectile, so it's a pretty good way of doing it. Uh, uh, those, of, those of you who have Nixle already know we've had a rash of recent burglaries in here. Uh, Richard, I hope you don't mind if I can take about another minute. No problem. Another good example of community policing, uh, we put out a Nixle blast, and I sent emails out as quickly as I could about residential burglaries uh, in the area between the 4-5 freeway, Beverly Glen, Ventura Boulevard, and Mount uh, in, in hard to get to locations, so we've actually asked for helicopter or airship to fly in the area uh, during the daytime, early uh, afternoons is when they're hitting. Uh, we've had our officers out there in plain clothes, direct to patrol, uh, but this evening at about 5 o'clock, this is how community policing works, and I really want to applaud the folks uh, at another time uh, for calling. At about 5 o'clock, they had a couple of young men knocking on the door, very clean cut looking, uh, trying to sell magazines, and they became uh, slightly aggressive. As some of you know, I mentioned that in my other meetings. Uh, if anyone does knock on your door selling anything, first of all, you have the right to say, no, thank you, do not let them in your home. And if they become aggressive or start typing at the door, as this person did, call us. So they were stopped, and uh, without giving out too much information, we have our undercover officers now are going to be doing a follow up to a hotel in another part of the Sacramento Valley because the way they work is they They'll have a white collar criminal who will bring on college students or folks on the streets, drop them off, dress them up nicely, drop them off in areas that they may be selling for a company, a legitimate magazine or newspaper rival company. Uh, but in the process of that, they're gathering intelligence. They're looking into your homes, looking around your neighbor's yards, and then they take that information back to the hotel where they're being housed and they start putting together identity theft situations. They may have a uh, a uh, duplicating device, uh, the ability to actually start credit cards and so forth through name, as well as looking for a residence to break into. So this is the way community policing works. Those people would call, they heard about the, the activity in the area, they thought it was suspicious, they didn't just shrug it off and say go away, they called us. So that's that's how that works. And I'm hoping they'll be in custody not too long and as, as they are arrested, we'll give you the satisfaction line that's a little bit safer. But um, please don't be only really concerned, you are in charge. 
I want to make sure you understand, if you let us know what you see and hear, you become empowered, and you empower us to do things legally. So, thank you. Thank you. Uh, before you leave, uh, your predecessor court have uh, made a pledge to these people here that, assuming uh, they were working that night, that you would be, that he would be attending all our meetings. Do we have a pledge like that coming up? <laughs> I am a grandfather with nine grandchildren, therefore, therefore I will make my best effort to be here as long as I will try to. And as long as you're not able to be here, we'll take second best, which is Captain Snell, the boss. <laughs> I was going to say uh, Justin Berger, who has no children over the show. I will make every effort to be here, um, uh, barring any unforeseen Thank you very, very much for that. Thank you.
you will be missed. I remember coming on about a year and a half ago, and even though you were CD2 field deputy, you did show me the ropes, and I'll always appreciate that and always remember that, so you will be missed. Just some quick updates from our office in regards to Sherman specific issues. We've been working with Caltrans and Metro in order to address traffic concerns uh, in and around Sepulveda and Ventura Boulevard, as well as, as Valley Vista and Sepulveda Boulevard. It's a mess as the 405 is creeping closer. We're trying to see if we can get some traffic mitigations from Caltrans because uh, it, it's, yeah, a 10 minute commute for me has turned into about 45 minutes and I'm sure that's, that's right. the same for most of you guys that are in the room who use Valley Vista as a, as a commuter route. So we are working with uh, those two agencies in order to see if we can get some further mitigations and alleviate the traffic concerns. Also, another thing that our office is working on, we partnered with uh, Council District 2 and uh, former bid board members in order to reestablish the Sherman Oaks bid on Ventura Boulevard and the ability to share the business improvement district. It's basically a uh, it, it's an organization that uh, takes property taxes from from landlords and business owners and puts them into beautifying Ventura Boulevard through sidewalk maintenance, tree trimming, and basically just beautifying the whole corridor of Ventura Boulevard overall. And uh, it uh, definitely fell apart about five years ago, and uh, we are we have been working diligently to try to get it back. So we are doing outreach to the uh, local business owners, and hopefully uh, they're receptive to it. Uh, lastly, the uh, construction has begun at 15222 Ventura Boulevard. That is the property next to City National Bank on Sepulveda and Ventura Boulevard. It's a 50-unit mixed-use project. And uh, from what we've heard, the, per the permits are vested and it will take 24 months to complete. Uh, we're working with their uh, attorneys as well as the developer in order to ensure that traffic mitigations that were agreed upon in 2006 between the developer, uh, the Sherman Oaks Homebrewers Association, and the Sherman Oaks Neighborhood Council are adhered to. So uh, be on the lookout for that. And that's that big empty lot. Thank you. No problem. Tomorrow? Wish you happy here tonight. I'm Tamar Gallus. I'm with the City Attorney's Office. I want to give like, two quick updates. First is, um, I don't know how many of you have noticed that there's more and different homeless people in Sherman Oaks of late. Um, we have also been noticing this. And unfortunately, one of the causes has to do with uh, the fact that the jails are letting folks out early. Um, folks are being released and have nowhere to go or have mental health problems and substance abuse problems and are ending up on the streets. So we are seeing this. So I'm just I'm saying this because I know I've had this conversation with many of you in this room who feel very sorry for a lot of the people who are out on the streets, especially now that it's getting cold and you're bringing food and clothes and blankets and all sorts of things. And I just want you to know that not all the people who are out there are exactly who you think they might be. So please be very careful. There are charities and other entities um, that will do outreach and get help for the people who want help. But we have some folks out there who don't want help and um, really are criminals who prey upon people. So please keep that in mind. The other update has to do with medical marijuana dispensaries. Uh, and we have uh, more than our fair share here in Sherman Oaks. Uh, there have been a whole bunch of recent court decisions on what cities can and can't do with, with regard to regulating them. As you know, LA passed um, a plan where we would permit so many of them and there would be a, like, a lottery system and all, all sorts of things. Um, the most recent appellate court that has looked at this has said that cities cannot do this. You cannot have a permitting plan that allows some and not others because you can't allow any of them. Because no one's allowed to sell marijuana uh, and that's against the federal law. The federal law is supreme and you, these cities, can only ban them. So this has gone back now to the city council and the city attorney's office to figure out uh, about drafting an ordinance that will probably ban dispensaries in the city of Los Angeles because it looks like that is the only, that is the guidance from the court. Uh, we are predicting that uh, many of the cases that are working their way up are going to go to the California Supreme Court, which will rule on this probably pretty quickly because there's so many cases in this system. Thank you for the question. Uh, are you going to be at the Holiday Toy Drive on Sunday, December 4th at the Gelson's Market between 11 and 2? And if so, what hat will you be wearing? <laughs> 
You bring my mom half because I'll bring my kids. Yay. Now, as a school board member, you wouldn't be answering questions about the schools? <laughs> seem to answer questions about the schools wherever I go, including like the frozen food aisle at Ralph's. So uh, I, uh, I will be happy to answer questions with whatever hat I'm wearing. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, Bob Anderson, who are those two young men? Wait a minute. Are they members? Yeah. They're your youngest. They, they dropped the, the average age. Who are those gentlemen? My two kids are here, and I know uh, they look like they are wonderful young men, and a lot of you remember when I was pregnant with the little one who's now seven. So. Wait a minute, they're going to misinterpret what I was doing. <laughs> bring them She up. is a great mother. Introduce them. Bring them up. Okay. Uh, Bob Anderson, uh, update on helicopters in the 405. And we'll start with the 405. Wesley, thanks for bringing it up. If any of you wondered what was the problem this morning, why was the traffic really bad? Yeah. There was a trench failure, a uh, working trench, on Sepulveda, where it goes under the freeway near the Getty Terminal. Failed during the night. They had to close most of the lanes on Sepulveda, only one in each direction, go 11.30 in the morning. They are supposed to finish that work at 5 a.m. Well, it backed up. It was a mess. I heard a friend in Encino, it's total gridlock. That's what can happen. New things coming. They're going to be building a center structure under the Mulholland Bridge in the 405 that you're going to have to go around to support the construction as they put the new bridge in. So it's going to narrow the freeway. You're going to have to swing around it. That's going to be wonderful. Um, I'm trying to work with Wesley and the council office to get some traffic mitigation plans. The west side has had, you know, the Wilshire closure, the Santa Monica closure, and the neighborhoods are going nuts because they put detour signs that lead into dead end streets. And uh, people making U turns at midnights in the middle of the streets. It's, uh, we're trying to avoid that in Sherman Oaks. So if anybody wants to know, I put a little memo together. Richard sent it out an email blast that sort of tells you what's coming up on the 405. Uh, lots of retaining walls, lots of noise walls. Pile driving will start fairly soon at the where Sepulveda goes under the 405 right near Valley Vista. They're adding 25 feet of width of the freeway, sort of driving pile to be able to put that in. So it's going to get really messy for a year and a half. 2013, it's all supposed to be done. Keep your fingers crossed. Helicopter noise. Uh, Councilman Berman has. Started, Congressman Berman, thank you, has started to introduce legislation, H.R. Uh, 2677, to reduce helicopter noise in L.A. They had a subcommittee meeting of the Aviation Subcommittee on the 27th of October. We submitted input. We're hoping the meetings will move out to L.A. where they belong because we're the ones who are being impacted by this. They asked us if we could fly to Washington for a one-hour meeting. We kind of know we don't really have a budget for, for that. So we hope they're going to move everything out here and we can start to get our input in. We have a petition. If you have not signed the petition, Helen's at the back of the room waving her arms. We've got 300 signatures so far. It basically says, I hate helicopter noise. Uh, we support Sherman Oaks homeowners in stopping it. If you want to sign it, see Helen or the other lady whose name I don't know. And we're collecting these and we're going to help Congressman Berman getting this put through. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, okay, uh, Marshall. Uh, I think Marshall is going to give a planning update with that. Matt Epstein needs to leave the room since he is chairman of the South Valley Planning Commission. He was out of the room anyways. Where are we boring now? Uh, okay, so I Elkie's going to go first. Oh, that's it. Elkie? And is Sean here? Hi, I'm Elkie Wagmeyer. Uh, before I get to my main topic, I will just bring you up to date on a couple of points. Uh, there's a lot at Magnolia and Kester uh, where building was torn down. At this point, they have the permission to uh, the demolition permit, but uh, no building permits have been applied for yet. And we sort of assume that they will come to us because they need variances. But at this point, it's an empty lot, which you might have seen 
there's another big issue before the city. Um, there's a proposed new residential plan development ordinance. This ordinance sounds very dangerous to us. It would give the city planning department carte blanche uh, to approve whatever they feel like if a builder designates a piece of land, no matter what the size is, uh, as planned development. In that case, no zoning laws, no other regulations would apply. So, uh, uh, Marshall might talk about that too, oh, but we, uh, we're really studying that and uh, we feel this is a very dangerous uh, proposition. So, you might see, uh, you might remember me talking about the Great Wall of Sherman Oaks. You have heard about it, maybe on the news. I uh, read about it on the Sherman Oaks patch in my baby rooms. <laughs> so, um, we, brought, we brought you the pictures that we presented to City Council. And uh, Steve is just going to give you a quick update on the details of the uh, project. Uh, my name is Steve Lazarus. I live on Deerville. I am two houses down from this disaster. Um, if you can look at the pictures that we have, you can see what our street looks like. It has looked like this basically since the 70s. Um, there's not many walls that are built on the street. Uh, we have a map here. <coughs> if anybody wants to take a look at it later, um, stats of 40 houses that are on Deerville. Um, of the 40 houses that we have on Deerville, there is, um, sorry for this, we have uh, about 18 houses that have no walls, no fences, some that have retaining walls. Uh, five do have fences, one has a special permit, one has been on for about 30 years. Now these are about 13 houses left. There's nine of them that have the most the of the pools have to be closed. Uh, four of them do not have pools. Three of those that don't have the pools, the fences are set back with the variance. <coughs> One of them that does not, and that is this property. The property in the middle is what it used to look like, where there were hedges in front and on the other side. And also, you can see with the back side, of the house look like before. The new people come in, they feel the hedges were not in privacy enough, and they work for years. They decide to erect a nine foot wall. It's actually seven feet with a nine with a biological on top with a light picture that's nine feet tall. The wall is two inches from the curb, it is built on city right away, it is built on city property. It is a liability on your um, it is so close to the street that you cannot park your car and open a car door, and the city has a, an issue with it. Um, it has been turned down by the zoning administrator, it has been turned down by self planning, and then went to the city council. Um, unfortunately, it was approved, which I think other people talked about, and then after that, they have to be able to get two more permits, hopefully, they'll fly. But if anybody has any questions, I have any pictures of the street you can take a look at. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. So the key issue here is this wall is built without permit on city property and over height. Uh, the building and safety deny the wall, the zoning administrator deny the wall, the South Valley Area Planning Commission deny the wall. All of those institutions who are responsible for upholding our our rules and regulations. Then our city councilman decided um, uh, he needs to overrule these. Our city councilman Falkerets, I'm sorry, uh, overruled all of these departments and brought the issue before City Hall. We all went. We have 25 neighbors signed statements, letters have been written, calls have been made. We submitted photos of the door, maps, everything to document that what Falkerets was saying was not true. Falkerets justified his, his uh, motion by saying, uh, the street is full of walls. Uh, the overhead fence is everywhere. It's not true. Our photos prove that it's not true. 
that their neighbor is a celebrity. So the homeowner said, oh, I'm worried about the paparazzi. None of the other neighbors have seen any paparazzi in, you know, over two years. And um, the Daily News researched the item and they said, uh, the paparazzi organization is not interested in this particular celebrity. And the wall is built on city property, and yet, our populist finds before City Hall, we all went, we have 25 neighbors signed statements, letters have been written, calls have been made, we submitted photos of the war, maps, everything to document that what Polkowitz was saying was not true. Polkowitz justified his, his uh, motion by saying uh, the street is full of walls. Uh, the overhead fence is everywhere. It's not true. Our photos prove that it's not true. The, the neighbor is a celebrity. So the homeowner said, oh, I'm worried about the paparazzi. None of the other neighbors have seen any paparazzi in, you know, over two years. And um, the Daily News researched the item and they said, uh, the paparazzi organization is not interested in this particular celebrity. And the wall is built on city property. And yet, uh, populists find that there is no reason to uh, allow uh, this wall to continue to exist. And we have been asking why. It doesn't make any sense. But uh, the city council unanimously, you know, like she, they followed the leader. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Okay, thank you. Um, the uh, purpose of the meeting is to have many reports. The owner of the wall is here. I told him we don't do the base. It's a committee report, but I'm going to give him two minutes to uh, give his side of the story. Come on up. And then uh, Marshall can give him a short report all the way. I can't hear you. Uh, good evening. My name is Joe Pico. Good And I live at uh, 3961 Newman. Yes. Um, he showed a beautiful wall. This is his home. My uh, home and house without the days um, made it in such a way that it would enhance the neighborhood. Um, all the neighbors like it, some afraid to talk about it because they are afraid of skin. Um, overall, my wood, the wall that we had was all the beautiful um, vegetation uh, that will, in time, it will cover the whole wall, or most of it. Um, this is this is this house compared to my house. Can you just please take a look, please drive by on the 3951 building drive and compare, and then you just listen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Marshall, we're running late, so thank you. Uh, see, the last person always has the least amount of time. And why don't we use, I do this kind of thing maybe better. Okay, thank you. Um, Quickly, um, the uh, Elijah Toscano project, uh, we are still collecting uh, card signatures in opposition. Uh, they are on the table over here. I would appreciate it if you could uh, sign. Um, this is a, the uh, 500 unit project between the gallery and the freeway uh, on Spoda. And uh, I've talked about it at other meetings. And so. Uh, if anybody has any questions, let me know. Uh, on the uh, quickly on on the uh, item that uh, Elke talked about, the um, the other problem with this um, uh, project was the the action that the council took, as he used uh, what was called a 245 uh, uh, ordinance, which by which he can remand, he can override the uh, 
the rulings of the, the building department, the planning department, and the uh, uh, planning commission, and uh, <clears throat> bypass the, the planning committee of the city council, and go straight to the uh, the city council to vote on a particular um, item. Uh, the city council always supports local local councilmen. So a fiefdom uh, in LA, a weak mayor, strong council, and uh, so so that's the problem with that. It also sets a very dangerous precedent. Uh, I mean, this is like using a hammer to swat flies. It just uh, it doesn't uh, make any sense. Um, the other thing that is coming up <coughs> on the uh, land uh, unit development ordinance, um, this is a very dangerous thing too. Uh, they have these in, 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 in San Diego. Uh, what happens uh, is that a developer can declare something a plan uh, unit development. Uh, they'll build however many houses. The problem with it, and, and one of the reasons cities support it, is that the developer builds the streets, the city does not own or maintain the streets. The owners of the houses have to maintain the streets. Similarly with the sewers uh, and, the, and the lights and the trees all get maintained by the, the uh, owners. So in the fullness of time, these things decay and, and the people in these houses don't have the money to maintain them. And so they, they tend to uh, degrade uh, the property. Um, so uh, you, you've read uh, in the newsletter uh, about the coalition of District 5 homeowners. I won't repeat that. I will repeat the and encourage you to come to the toy drive on December 4th at Gilson's. Make sure you park in the back of the store. And, and, and be sure to say hi to Santa Claus, who's a close friend of mine. Thank you. Make sure you bring a camera out here. Okay.